What's going on guys, the War Chevy Plays here And welcome back to another video And today guys, we are going to be talking about the Daytona 500 And also for the most part of this video, we're going to be talking about the Jazz 7 car And what kind of aero packages I want to see in Rio Ratman's baby our baby, the car that everybody's been waiting for since we've been wanting to get rid of the abysmal Gen 6 car. And we're about to get into that right here, right now. If you guys are cool it down with that, everybody get ready and buckle up, because here we go. All right, so we're going to talk about what happened in the 63rd running of the Daytona 500. And in my honest opinion, 80% of the race was a drink it up. There's two this force. Obviously, everybody else wrecked out on lap 15, which in my opinion, it was all on Bell. <laughs> but yeah, we end up getting to a five hour rain delay, which, uh, and I'm not gonna lie, I was enjoying playing some Warzone yesterday. <laughs> and then, you know, everything was cool, I mean, you know, I usually do not like the single file racing. I'm hoping we're willing to get rid of that. Came down to it. Logano, all the Pansky cars have wrecked on the final lap. Hardhead from Logano, Sendrick, Keselowski, and Kyle Busch. And who will take the checker flag? Not Chase Elliott, Michael McDowell. And in full honesty, like, this entire 500 was sort of mid at best it's like you know the pre race was pretty much pretty good and i was expecting the, the beginning of the race to be better until lap 15. it's just like i'm one of those people that doesn't care about timing just as long as i get to see it but i really think we should not start literally 80 percent of the races on the schedule at three four o'clock because usually around before the evening that's when the weather majorly comes into play and I don't think it will be that hard to move some races into the noon and you know if West Coast people have to wake up I mean pretty much all of us have to wake up in order to catch up F1 race so I don't see what's the problem here but other than that I am very happy for the 34 team of Michael McDowell and I'm also happy for my boy Chase Elliott grabbing second oh, no! oh, now time to touch on the super speedway package for the Gen 7. I'm not sure if we're going to be exactly getting the same current package as we have now, but I don't really have much of a problem with the current package. These cars are just getting humongous like runs off of each other to the point where even if you get bump drafted, you need to get early hooked right into the wall like you're not even turning right you're just going straight right and and it's gotten to the point where you not only almost lost ryan newman to the point where someone gets severely hurt or actually dies and and you may be asking oh tavoris is it you think there's any way to prevent this of course i do i think we should integrate the current package with the 2011 and 2012 tandem drafting package and why am i saying this because again it's, it's so much having to do with aero and gravity at this point because you get like for example on nascar heat 5 you the guy behind you is getting a run on you but it's able to draft with you and actually stick like i'm not even turning left or right as you can see on the screen i'm not turning left or right or getting error loose. The guy behind me is sticking to me. And as I get to the car out, up in front of me, he may scroll up a bit, but I'm actually sticking to him, correct? And it's like, and the reason all these big runs are so huge, like the arrow and the gravity pull itself makes the runs so huge. And I personally think it's starting to get really really and really dangerous nascar can do something with the gen 7 aero package at super speedways like talladega and daytona i want them to see to keep things current and like everything's fine in terms of drafting 
It's just, you know, in case someone gets like a big run on the ground in front, you know, they'll be able to stick. And when they stick, you know, they might get a bit squirrely, but not actually turn right into the wall. So there's kind of like a bit of skill within that. And then once they stick, you know, they can stick as long as you much. Hell, they could go a whole lap, you know, sticking to each other's bumpers. And the reason why I'm kind of asking for this little concept package with the current and the 2012 package is because these crashes are becoming way more and more dangerous. Like we seen Kozlowski catch the catch fence. It was, it felt like yesterday where Ryan Newman literally got hurt during the last lap of the 2020 Daytona 500. So I think it might not exactly prevent it, but it will be a, like a good way to make these cars more safe in terms of drafting and getting runs. And you know, big ones, flips, someone be in the catch fence. It's going to happen regardless. It's super speed day racing. And you know, I expect those things to happen, but to prevent from anybody from being in danger or anyone being killed, not even majorly, just like a little bit, I think it helps. So what kind of aero package do I want to see within the Gen 7 car in terms of short tracks? To be honest, I do not want to really see much of a change because, you know, with the Gen 6 car, short track racing, in terms of it, have been neither decent or <laughs> pretty damn good. So I don't really expect anything within the sh short track packages to really change that much. Although I do want to keep the spoilers very small and maybe give back the 900 horsepower for short tracks and, and, and also maybe in workhorses. I can say to say for workhorses because they're neither boring or pretty good. And you know, they, they've been doing well last year as well. So I don't really expect things to change within the aero packages for road courses and sh short tracks. This is going to be a very, very crucial one. Gen 7 car, a mile has. What kind of package do I want to see? And obviously, mile and a half racing over the past couple of years have been mediocre. And you know, there's been hella good restarts here and there, and great battles for the lead, but oh, bring that fat ass thing over here. Dirty Air has been playing a major factor for almost a decade now. You're always gonna have Dirty Air in racing regardless, but what I saw within the playoffs last year at Kansas, when Harvick and Logano were battling out, Harvick had the faster car, but Logano was able to hold him off because of dirty air. And I was like, yeah, we got to see something different. So what I request for the aero package a mile and a half, I want to see a mix of Gen 4 and the 2014 aero packages. I want to see a mix of that because if you look back at Gen 4 racing, there are some gold moments, there are some good finishes. Like, for example, Bobby Labonte, Jimmy Johnson, 2006, uh, who else? Larson, Harvick, Gordon, Kozlowski, bowing out at 2014. There are so many good moments. So that's why we should bring back the 900 horsepower. The reason we haven't seen 900 horsepower is because of insurance issues. And this is a fact, by the way. And yeah, and you know, I don't really care just as long as the air package is between 800 and 750 horsepower. I just want some good racing a mile and a half again. I just don't want dirty air being a major factor in half of those races. But that's going to do it for me today, guys. And yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think about what I said about the air packages. And you know, I'm very excited for the Gen 7 cars. And also, let me know down below if you want more NASCAR videos like this. And I, like I said back in the reaction video, I'm going to do more NASCAR videos as often as I can. And yeah, if you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to 
share it with your friends share it on twitter share on discord and also follow me on instagram twitter and tiktok and yeah if you enjoyed this video be sure to hit that like button comment and subscribe with all notifications on so you don't miss an upload and it's your boy to worship me play sam peace out catch you guys later peace hey guys if you made it to the end of this video and you want to see more content in the future asap hit the like button comment to give me feedback and ideas and subscribe and click that bell to turn on all notifications on so you won't miss a single banger from your boy and this is Tavoris champion plays saying peace out catch you guys in the next video